Hey, you came back. And well, if this is your first time, welcome to the Come Again podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Bartley, and this is where we talk about all things reinvention and storytelling. Now, we haven't really hit on storytelling just yet. Don't worry, we'll get there eventually, especially when there will be guests and all of that. But for now, we've been doing some profiles, just focusing on individuals and looking at how they have changed their lives. Now, I think that the last few that we did, it was not just a career shift, but the career was tied to their identity. Um, and, and not that their career made their identity, but as they shifted um, or gotten opportunities in their careers, it also helped to change who they were for the better. Or sometimes it was vice versa. Like I think Robert Downey Jr., as he got better as a person, the, the opportunities also then came. So it can be either or. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this article. So it's from Inc. Magazine. I don't know the date on this because many times with um, certain sites, when they want to kind of keep things relevant, they'll hide that metadata. So I don't know how old this is, but this is from Rachel Gillett and Richard Filoni. And this Inc. Magazine article is entitled 19 Extremely Successful People Who Changed Careers After Turning 30. And then the subheading here says it's never too late to change in your life or to make a change. It's never too late to make a change in your life. So we're going to go through 19 and you just might resonate with some of these individuals uh, and you may not even agree with maybe how some of them have particular views in life. And but that's not what this is about. This is about just showing you how these individuals, how these individuals have made a change. Now, what I will say is before we dive into that, let's review. Let's review the reinvention, realignment and reset framework that we built together. And the reason why I say together is because it was created by doing this podcast and you listening. So we have built this thing together. Now, remember, reinvention is at the bottom of the pyramid. It's the foundation. It's also also the most philosophical. So we're talking about beliefs, values, identity. Uh, it's usually when you feel uh, perpetually unfulfilled. OK, there's just this, this void. You, you know that something's missing. You're not sure what it is. So that's where you focus on figuring out, OK, uh, what are my set of values? Uh, who am I as an individual? What do I believe? And you have to start there in order to begin to fill that void. It doesn't come with money. It doesn't come with even the career shift or anything like that. It comes with starting with who you are and being satisfied or happy with who you or, or aware of where you want to be, where you are now, where you want to be, and then filling in those voids, those gaps to become the happy person um, that you see yourself being. And I use happy, uh, but I know that sounds many times trite to many people. You want to be a happy person, but you can fill that in with joy. You can fill that in with satisfaction. The point is you need to be OK with you first before making any other changes. And or more than OK, actually, you need to be excited about you. All right. So then we go from reinvention to realignment, which is the most strategic phase of this framework. It's the most strategic because that's where your goals and your visions lie. So the question of am I making progress or why? Why am I not moving the way that uh, or getting to where I want to get to? Not in, necessarily in a particular time frame, but just in a in a manner that is fulfilling so it's like when you when when your progress is lacking or when your priorities need to shift it doesn't necessarily mean you need to revamp everything many times all you need to do is just rearrange what it is that you're focusing on and then from there you can move forward your beliefs are intact your values are intact who you are as a person is intact those are okay but your direction is what needs to be revamped. And then we have reset, which is at the pinnacle of the pyramid. And with resetting your habits, uh, resetting your routines, it is the most practical phase, right? So this is where there are maybe particular habits, behaviors that no longer serve you. So at the bottom of re, uh, the pyramid reinvention, there's particular thinking that's no longer serving you. At the top 
It's specific behaviors because you're thinking now. And of course, it takes time, but your thinking is being refined. But now the behaviors may not align with the new thinking you have adopted, the new person you've become. All right. So we've taken a look at this paradigm. But here's the thing. Careers can be reinvented. You can reinvent your career, but it doesn't mean that you are reinventing yourself as an individual. There are times, though, where because of the career, you can change in your beliefs and all of that. And then and that's tricky that sometimes that's a, a good thing. Sometimes it's not a good thing. Um, but those things definitely influence what you believe and, and who you become. But you are not your job. Right. You are not your career. And there are obviously is a difference between a job and a career. Career is more so of a trajectory and a set of jobs that you do. It's almost like a path professionally that you have um, gone on or are going on. And then the job is just the instance within that path, the path. So you aren't your job, but you can reflect the journey of those jobs, which is the career, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look because I want you to keep in mind that with these individuals, these 19 extreme, apparently this article says it's extremely successful people. What we're going to do is I'm just going to read the, um, the, the, the little blurb they have for each one. So it's not like a huge profile. And this just might be uh, some of the, the samples that we can pull from additional profiles. And by all means, please, if there are any people that you know or that you think of that would be great to do a profile on, let me know. And as we're going through these, maybe we can think about some ideas or some of the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of months that would align with um, their changes. So the first person on this list, which I guess I'm not surprised about, is Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos has a, had a lucrative career in computer science on Wall Street and took on top roles at various financial firms before transitioning to the world of e-commerce and launching Amazon at 31. Now, remember, we're looking at individuals after 30, older than 30. And so he starts off in finance, switches over to e-commerce and really web, too, because web was was definitely still uh it was emerging as well. Um, and obviously we know what Amazon is today. Interesting though, is I think that there still is a connection between him being tied to the financial world and then being in e-commerce. So I don't know if that is that much of a switch or that much of a pivot, but it's a pivot enough that he was able to make this article. And I think also because, um, is he the third richest person I think in the world? And once again, when this article is written, I'm not sure if that was the case, but um, obviously he did reinvent his career. His career shifted significantly. Julia Child is another one. She worked in advertising, media and secret intelligence. Before. Listen, I did not know that. And I've seen the movie Julie and Julia, which is uh, I would probably say my top 20 films that I that I like. And. Before writing her first cookbook, when she was 50, this is what she was doing. And then when she wrote her first cookbook at 50, she launched a career as a celebrity chef in 1961. Whew. Wow. OK, so that's 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 that I would say that is a great example of the shift where at the age of 50, doing everything from, first of all, the fact that you go from media and advertising, which of course go hand in hand to secret intelligence. And then from there to her first cookbook, it then shouldn't necessarily be surprising because of the trajectory going from marketing to being secretive. It's like the opposites, right? You got to go from marketing to secret intelligence. And then from there becoming a celebrity chef. Okay. Julia did not know that about her. And I think what I'll probably do is uh, share if I'm able to listen, the whole uh, licenses with, with sharing images. And I think all of these are Getty images. <sighs> I've been through some things in that in the past. So I want to be very careful with sharing images, but I, you need to see these individuals. I just don't want to talk about them and you not get a, a, you know, put a face to the name. 
John Glenn is another one, is best known for becoming the first American astronaut to orbit Earth in 1962. But 12 years later, at 53 years old, he became a U.S. senator in Ohio, a role he held for 24 years. I didn't realize it was 24 years. He did return to space in 1998, however, on a nine day mission aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. OK. So that's another one where now in his 50s, he made a shift. Uh, Terry Crews, a little bit more recent has received numerous accolades for his comedy work on award-winning shows such as Everybody Hates Chris and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. But no one was laughing when they got tackled by Cruz during his four-season stint as a defensive player for various NFL teams in the mid-90s. So he was a football player first and then, of course, transitioned over to television. I think he was also a host, I think, for America's Got Talent or something like that. So, um... Once again, that shift, and you see this shift a lot, especially with uh, former professional athletes, which I think is pretty great because um, I think that at some point what I want to do is do some sort of or create some sort of program or um, platform, something where we take individuals who are renowned for what they've done, but talking about reinvention, you are not what you have done over the last 10, 20 years, even though you are going to be closely associated with that. And I think that that's going to be helpful for individuals who, you know, you're known for doing football, you're known for doing basketball or even acting like you known, but then you are shifting or adding on creating a multifaceted persona of just who you are. You're not just one thing and that might be interesting. So, um, yeah, but this is very common though, that we see with professional athletes. Uh, here's another one, Martha Stewart was a full-time model until as a 25 year old mother she found few modeling jobs coming her way sounds about right and after a five-year stint as a wall street stockbroker so she goes from modeling to stockbroking stockbrokering and after a five-year stint on Wall Street, she turned her love of gourmet cooking and creative presentation into what is now Martha Stewart Living Omni Media. And then, of course, you know, now Snoop Dogg is with it, too. And, you know, that was a whole, whole cool vibe. Uh, so here's the thing with this yet again. She goes from and it's very interesting how some of these individuals are coming from the financial sector. So modeling, finance and then cooking. Uh, Julia Child, uh, I don't think she did modeling. Let's see. No, advertising, media, secret intelligence than cooking. So um, very interesting connections there. OK, Michael Bloomberg left his job as CEO of financial software, data and media company Bloomberg LP at 59 in 2002 to assume the role of mayor of New York City, which he held for 12 years. And then he has since re assumed his role at Bloomberg as CEO. Once again, uh, not sure if he is right now. I'm kind of far removed from understanding or knowing what's going on on the Bloomberg side of things and how old this article is. But we're going to assume that that's still the case. If it's not, let me know in the comments whether or not that's, um, you know, that's still accurate. But the point is here that at 59, he left and he shifted to a total. It, it, it really is, you know, going from. But once again, finance. Um, media. Now, I'm not saying that if you're in finance or if you're in media, that that's that is the optimal uh, uh, job or maybe kind of trajectory in your career that you're doing in order to make a reinvention. But we're just looking at patterns here and I'm looking at this live because I didn't even look through the entire thing before deciding to do this for our for our episode today. So we're going to kind of explore this together. Vera Wang was a figure. Uh, she was a figure skater and journalist before entering the fashion industry at age 40. And today she's one of the world's premier women's designers. Hmm. OK, did not know that. And actually, until now, I actually have never really put a face to who Vera Wang was. And so the fact that she comes from athletics, right, professional sport to journalism and then fashion, as you can see, like a lot of 
you know, even though there's some like there was coming from uh, from finance or coming from from marketing or, or advertising, it's not always the case. We've got people who are coming from football, people from figure skating to journalism, then to fashion or from uh, football to uh, being a, a comedian and then, you know, hosting television shows. All right. We're going to keep going here because I, I hope that this this episode particularly is going to be inspiring enough to know that it's never too late. And remember, these are all people after the age of 30, right? I'm past 30, so this is also inspiring to me as well. But Dwayne The Rock Johnson transitioned careers not once but twice before he was the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. And Johnson was briefly a backup linebacker for the Canadian Football League's Calgary Stampeders. He ditched the football career. Then he joined World Wrestling Federation, WWF, in 96 at 24, which catapulted him to stardom and allowed him to cross over to TV and movies in the early 2000s. And as you all already know, he is still quite notable, I would say, very popular in, in movies up till up till now so reinvention happens and 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 you know as you are reinventing your career it also maybe reflects as an evolution of your identity versus just the whole reinventing of your identity right maybe it just adds layers of who you are as a person okay so this is great um here's another one long before ronald reagan became the 40th president of the united states at 69 he was a young up-and-coming Hollywood actor in film and TV. So that's Ronald Reagan, almost at the age of 70. So it was like the reverse in TV and then pivoted where Bloomberg was in the financial sector and then he, was it Bloomberg? Hold on, let me check, let me check again. If it was Bloomberg that we're looking at here. Um, yeah, Bloomberg t uh, was... Um, was in uh, finance, and then he went to uh, to assume the role of mayor, and then he went back to doing what he did before as a CEO of Bloomberg. And then you have once again Terry Crews, who professional football player, and then he went to TV. I think that one's the one that's a little bit more um, more aligned there. Okay. So just because you start off in entertainment doesn't mean that you can't transition, okay? Because oftentimes it seems as if it's individuals who are in another sector, then they go to TV, then they go to marketing. But yeah, not doesn't have to be the case. Okay, billionaire Spanx founder Sarah Blakely sold office supplies door to door for seven years in her 20s before her line of slimming footless pantyhose launched to success in 2000. She quit her sales job at 30 to run her company full time. Matter of fact, I didn't realize that um, Spanx was uh, that, I don't want to say old, but you know, that it was, that it's been around for that long. Hmm. Okay. So that's Blakely. So she goes from door to door salesman to billionaire, uh, footless pantyhose i guess what would that be called like an undergarment uh undergarment business the point is she put in that work though for almost most of her 20s and then from there was able to make that shift i'd be very interested in, in seeing what that story is and this is part of why we're doing this because now i can probably dive into that and we can make that you know uh, a profiling piece this one is probably going to be more notable for many of you. Arnold Schwarzenegger has made two major career changes. First, when he transitioned from world champion bodybuilder in his 20s to award-winning actor in his 30s. And then when he became the governor of California in 2003 at 56. Do you see that? How the, the shift where it's like a decade after bodybuilding, so like 10 years later, just about, he's acting. And then he's acting for about 20 years. And I think he's probably still doing it, but 20s. And then he shifts to being uh, in the political scene at 56. So it doesn't mean, and for those of you that are very time focused, where, you know, in my 20s, I'm going to do this. In my 30s, I'm going to do this. In my 40s, I'm going to do this. Nothing's wrong with having a vision. Nothing's wrong with having a plan. 
But my suggestion would be to hold it loosely while, of course, staying disciplined and while having that vision in mind, because the vision can change. The direction can change. And that's OK. OK, nothing's wrong with that. Um, what I would say is even as we're going probably maybe halfway through this, is that most of these individuals have um, ridiculous amount of work ethic. So no matter what they're doing, they're bringing their best self to the next stage of their life, or in this case, their careers, I suppose, which is also their life. Harlan Sanders, better known as Colonel Sanders, was 62 when he franchised Kentucky Fried Chicken in 1952, which he sold for $2 million 12 years later. It's very interesting. I'm seeing this 12-year thing kind of popping up where people are shifting and they're doing it for 12 years and either coming back or something is happening with 12 years. Not that that's a magic number, but just picking up on patterns again. Before serving up his renowned original recipe, Sanders held several odd jobs, including country lawyer, gas station operator, and railroad, railroad worker. All right, Colonel. So, it's just, so here's the thing. You remember when we talked about where a lot of the people that came from things were probably from the financial or marketing sector, or maybe they were acting or they're a professional athlete. Sanders wasn't. Sanders was pumping gas for people. He was laying down iron for railroads. He was a country lawyer. Now, that's very interesting. I'm very interested to understand what that, what that all entailed there. All right, Colonel. Next up, before launching... Viral new media sites, BuzzFeed and the Huffington Post in his 30s. Jonah Peretti was teaching middle schoolers how to use Microsoft Office as a computer science teacher. So from teacher to building out these media sites. OK. I thought Huffington, Huffington Post was from um, is it Ari, Ariana Huffington, but I guess he's the one that I guess helped build it out as an actual media site versus the actual publication itself. The point is teacher, computer teacher. I remember back in back in middle school when, you know, there were very few of us that actually wanted to be a part of the in. There was like this inner unspoken circle of people, students who helped the IT guy learn how to not just, you know, push carts around. This is, listen, this is from way back in the day where we would like push carts around and help people hook things up. But we wanted to know more than just how to help a teacher hook up their audio visual equipment in a classroom. Like we were going in, like he was like in this dark IT room and he was showing us things about computers. It was pretty cool. So I say that because it just brought back the memory of working with a an IT professional that was in our middle school, but he was not a teacher. But the point is, look, from computer science to media science, which isn't that big of a gap if you really think about it. So some of these, it makes sense. And so the reinvention isn't necessarily reinvention as much as it is just uh, uh, like a micro evolution or, you know, a development, I guess would be a better way. Because when I think of reinvention, I think of an entire shift, like an entirely different sector, like everything is just has been changed. So, OK, how about comedian and former The Talk, The View talk show host, Joy Bear? I, I, I don't know. Is she still? I thought she was still on The View. Um, I never pronounced or heard her last name. I'm going to assume it's Bayer. Uh, has always had the gift of gab, but she didn't get her start in comedy until nearly dying from an ectopic pregnancy in her late 30s. Persuaded her to quit her teaching job and pursue her dream. Sometimes what happens is there is some sort of traumatic experience that causes you to make the leap. I'll talk about this in my seven frame uh seven stage frame i can't even remember what it's called the seven point storytelling framework i gotta shorten that and right before the midpoint which is the point of no return there's usually a big event which is something euphoric it could be like an, a promotion or something like that or it can be traumatic like there's a death or in this case like a near-death experience and it causes you to say you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and go for it it doesn't always have to be negative sometimes it's a really positive thing that happens that also boosts you to make a decision but oftentimes it is something that makes you think about the brevity of life and say, you know what? No time like the present. Let's go for it. So that's joy from The View. Ray Kroc, a very, very interesting movie, by the way, uh, called The Founder. 
did not know that that's how Ray Kroc became McDonald's or how he uh, acquired McDonald's. But Ray Kroc spent his career as a milkshake device salesman before buying McDonald's at age 52 in 1954. And he grew it into the world's biggest fast food franchise. I actually like that movie. Um, he was ruthless, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and you may or may not agree with his with his methods. Well, based on the movie, of course. Um, but I will say it's one of those ethical questions of is it is it worth building the thing and making it what it is? Obviously, today, um, if at the at the expense of maybe severing relationships or ties or maybe even a particular level of quality of what the food was, even though apparently, you know, back then he knew how to maximize on that. The one thing that I will take away that I've always taken away from that movie is that he didn't just build a thing and and and, and uh, it was more about real estate than anything. It wasn't just about the food. It was about the property. But what I will say is this. He was always in the kitchen and he knew the movements and the maneuvering of how people were 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 serving and how they were making everything. Um, and he, because of that, was able to become an efficient manager first. And then he became, uh, I guess, a business partner. And then from being a business partner, he was able to acquire the whole thing. But the point is, he was in the trenches first. Something to be said about individuals who reinvent their careers 30 and up. They have put in a lot of we can call it sweat equity. I think that Cal Newport talks about uh, career capital. Like there's a lot of capital that they have, a lot of experience so that when they transition, it's not so different as we think it is. But sometimes it is like. So, for instance, let's talk about Terry Crews switching from professional football to being on television. Of course, the skill set is a little bit different, but he's also still in front of a television. So that would be like the baseline where he's still someone who's being recorded for performing, but now it's in a different way. It's no longer about his athletic acumen as much as it is uh, his comedic prowess or it's um, his ability to connect with an audience, not with a ball, but with a microphone and, you know, that kind of thing. I don't reduce his career to that, but you know what I'm saying? There is still some baseline, but with that also comes some experience that he's had, you know, uh, as a football player and then transitioning over into um, television. So or television entertainment, which is still see, that's the thing, because professional sports is still entertainment. Right. So there's got to be some overlaps here. So, for instance, with Ray Kroc selling a milk milkshake device, he was a salesman. But this salesman evolved into a manager who evolved into a partner who evolved into an owner. And um, yeah. Mary Anna Mary Robertson Moses. It's a very long name, Anna Mary. She's better known as Grandma Moses. Okay, it's a little better. She began her prolific painting career at 78. And in 2006, one of her paintings sold for $1.2 million. Now, I don't know if this is after, you know, while she was still living, not sure. But in 2006, sold for 1.2 mil. And previously, she was a housekeeper and farm laborer. Right. I wonder if her paintings reflected once again that that uh, that experience, right? The career capital that she had. Wonder if that was the case. Um, very interesting. Taikichiro Mori. Taikichiro was an academic who became a real estate investor at age fifty-one when he founded the Mori Building Company. That's M-O-R-I, building company. His brilliant investments made him the richest man in the world in 1992 when he had a net worth of $13 billion. Okay, that's big. So I'm assuming as an academic, he's probably or was a professor, might have even had a doctorate and or, you know, some sort of high. I'm going to assume someone who's an academic, you know, big on research, etc., And he then switches to real estate, founds a company. And with that, that's not that big of a jump either. And, you know, I'm, I'm learning as well that many times when you're reinventing, it doesn't necessarily mean you leave the thing that you've done behind. Of course, you carry the experience with you, but some people can do both or multiple. 
which begs the question, is that reinvention? If you don't fully switch over, is that reinvention? I don't know. Very interesting thing to think about there. Uh, Donald Fisher was 40 and had no experience in retail when he and his wife, Doris, opened up the first Gap store in San Francisco in 1969. So the Gap's clothes quickly became fashionable. And today the company is one of the world's largest clothing chains. Interesting. I'm assuming it's still one of the world's largest clothing chains. And um, the fact, though, that there was no retail experience between him and his wife, Donald and Doris, and they then opened up a store. I'm very curious to know what kind of experience they did have before opening in that store. Very curious. But the fact that they didn't have experience, I think, and they did this at the age of 40. Mm hmm. OK, I think this is the last one here. Tim and Nina Zagat, both lawyers in their late 30s when they published their first collection of restaurant reviews under the Zagat name in 1979. I think Zagat is a big deal because the brand eventually became a mark of culinary authority. I mean, you know, that's when you got these reviews and and um, critics that uh, put their weight, I guess, behind Zagat. And if your restaurant is doesn't hold weight or if it's not even mentioned by the Zagat review, what is it, a publication? I should know this. Um, then it's, it's not really taken seriously. Well, I guess in certain circles, maybe it's not. But the point is they were lawyers and then they switched to culinary, not even making ah, not even making the food. They weren't making the food. They're critiquing the food. I don't always have to. So we had Martha Stewart, who definitely was also cooking. We had Julia Childs, who also was or child, who was also cooking. But then Tim and Nina, they weren't cooking. They might have not touched a, a, a spatula a day in their life. Who knows? Point is, though, they were still in the culinary area, but focusing on um, the reviews, the critiques of other people's cooking. I don't know, maybe they maybe Zagat done critiques on Julius. I, I don't know you know maybe you know did a little something about Martha Stewart I have no idea but the point is they went and did what they I don't want to be cliche and say what they were passionate about but what they enjoy doing or what they and sometimes it's not even what you enjoy doing as much as there was an opportunity to be had and then you sought it I think that that's what happens with Ray Kroc Ray Kroc saw the opportunity um I think his passion was sales yeah whether real estate being the manager and being able to franchise and know what know what to look for in other managers i think ray Kroc was that guy but sales at the heart of it you know being able to help or persuade people to make a decision a buying decision for something not for the food in this case i know it was the real estate property and all of that but the point is this the people that shifted i wonder if they shifted sh up from sheer passion in something else or opportunity, because maybe there's just an opportunity to do something um, or curiosity. So it's not that they were curious about it. I mean, it's not that they were passionate about it. It's not that there was, in a sense, an opportunity per se, but maybe there was just curiosity that eventually had an opportunity open. And then that curiosity met with that opportunity. And then perhaps it became now a passion. Like Vera Wang, you, you don't become you don't become one of the most world's premier fashion companies without enjoying or fashion design company without enjoying the work. I don't know. I just can't I just can't see that. OK, so um, these were the 19. These were the 19 individuals, all 30 and above. And you let me know which one stood out to you the most. OK, so we had Bezos, who did Amazon. We had Julia Child, who became a celebrity chef. John Glenn, who switched from astronaut to senator. That's probably a huge one. But after watching uh, For All Mankind on Apple TV, I can see how that even is, is you know, is not far of a leap. But OK, Terry Crews who goes from football to 
comedy and just TV entertainment. We have Martha Stewart, who's also doing, I, I, I don't know if she's considered a celebrity, celebrity chef, but gourmet cooking and creative presentations, because I think she did more than just cooking. But And then we have my, Michael Bloomberg, who transitions from uh, financial software and the media company to being mayor, and then he goes back. Farrah Wang, figure skater to fashion designer. We have Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who goes from a few things. He goes from linebacker, so football, and then he goes into wrestling, which are connected, right? Those are connected. And then from there, he goes into um, TV and movies, which, once again, a lot of those things are very similar to, I think, uh, Terry Crews when you're talking about being filmed and entertaining people just in a different capacity. Ronald Reagan, actor to president. You've got Sarah Blakely, who goes from door-to-door salesperson to her um, undergarment company that made billions or is making billions. Arnold Schwarzenegger, bodybuilder, actor, then governor. You've got Colonel Sanders who goes from all of the odd jobs, from lawyer to gas station operator, railroad railroad worker, to then the person who has this original recipe for chicken that creates this $2 million fried chicken company. We've got Jonah Peretti, BuzzFeed Huffington Post, but before that, he was a Microsoft Office computer science teacher. <laughs> um, then we have Joy Bayer, or Behar, who is from The View, but before that, um, here she had a teaching job, so she was also a teacher, very similar to Joe Peretti. We then, uh, Jonah Peretti, we then have Ray Kroc. He goes from salesman to owning one of the biggest fast food franchises. We have Anna Marie Robertson Moses, Goes from housekeeper and farmer or farm laborer, I guess there's a, excuse me, I guess there's a difference to prolific painter. And, and you know, I wonder with call her grandma Moses, I wonder if just being out there and just leveraging as the housekeeper, as a farm laborer, I wonder, and I should probably look, look that up. What she, I mean, why not do that? Let's see. Um. I'm going to look up her paintings and see what comes up. Yeah, a lot of it looks very nature oriented. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so with that, like she's left, once again, that career capital, she's leveraging. (sighs) Wow. So, so it's interesting to think then that maybe a lot of what you think is a full on reinvention, there's some roots, some seeds, something, some foundation, some baseline, some golden thread that's kind of weaved in between what you were doing and now what you are doing. And it may seem different. It may seem entirely new going from bodybuilder to governor. But maybe there's some things along the way that were able to connect the dots between what you used to do this is what you are doing. Taiki Chiro Mori goes from academic, who's likely most likely a professor, to a real estate investor. Um, Donald and Doris Fisher, no retail experience to opening up the Gap store. And then Tim and Nina Zagat, lawyers in their late 30s, to then publishing their first collection of restaurant reviews under the Zagat name in 1979. So 19 individuals here. Which one do you resonate with? The one that I resonate with the most is probably, hmm, let me see. Uh, Maybe John Glenn. John, you know, going from astronaut, because, you know, to become an astronaut, which, by the way, that's no small feat. Uh, Many times when people think about, you know, um, aeronautics and that that kind of science, you know, astronauts is not the only thing that you can do when it comes to aerospace. There's so many other 
facets, but I think being coming an astronaut is very, like there's a fine, very like s uh, small percentage of individuals who become astronauts. So for him to do that and then to like actually get out, like leave Earth and actually, you know, so there's that becoming a senator which he held for over two decades that that is and then from there returning back to i guess his first love something poetic about that um going to uh traveling into the unknown and then leaving the unknown coming back to the familiar and doing politics amongst other people it's like maybe from one known to the other really though because it, he's from astronaut to u.s senator that's from one known to the other he he's never known what a senator was what it was like to be one he not like he had a political science major i wonder if the clout too from being an astronaut helped to you know have this american you know patriarch or patriotic kind of persona he left and he represented America while in space. He has to be senator if he runs kind of a thing. So, yeah, um, that, I think that might be the one that sticks out to me. What I would have loved to see, though, is more black and brown faces here. I think I've only seen one, two. Yeah, two, two. And then, of course, we've got um, like maybe two. I'm Asian, at least of the Asian persuasion that are here. But yeah, we'd love to see them more diverse. And maybe that's something that, you know, I also do. I also maybe help to to create. All right. So we are pushing almost 45 minutes. Thank you so much for rocking with me on this particular episode. I know it's been quite a long one, but I hope it was helpful. When you think about your own journey, when it comes to reinvention, I would also consider this. Maybe you don't need to reinvent your values and beliefs. Maybe it is to just reinvent. And I put that in air quotes for those of you that are listening. I, maybe it's just to reinvent your career. Perhaps it is to change the trajectory of where you are in your career path. And maybe you don't just go totally off base. As you can see, the individuals that probably have made a huge shift outside of maybe like the John Glenn's. They've done maybe two and perhaps from what we know, three shifts before even becoming the celebrity chef or becoming the TV entertainment icon. So I also think about that, too. It probably has happened in steps. And I'm almost certain that the Secret Service intelligence person in Julia Child did not say while she left media to become or to serve as a secret intelligence agent i'm pretty sure she didn't say you know what i'm gonna do after i do this i'm gonna write a cookbook and become a celebrity chef can almost put money on on the fact that that wasn't the case but whatever they did they put their all into it they really did i i i can't imagine anything less and the reason why i know that they put their all into it is because apparently they are considered at least for this article 19 extremely successful people. Okay, so great article. I hope that this has inspired you in some regard, especially if you're looking for some sort of change. Perhaps you start with the career. And then you can work your way up, manage up, or you can manage down. And by down, I mean, maybe it's more philosophical than just shifting, not just jobs, but your career trajectory. Okay. Thank you for being with me for these almost, uh, for, for almost an hour and I'll see you again soon. Come again. <laughs>